Greetings everyone and welcome back to a rambly, chill, sort of no-nonsense video here. I've got an item that I purchased from eBay because I'm in lockdown. I decided to go on eBay and just search through a whole bunch of listings and I found a hidden gem on there and I thought I wouldn't mind grabbing that to put in my collection. So we're going to be taking a look at that today. But if you don't like rambly and chill videos and stuff, then this probably isn't going to be the video for you. So I highly recommend not continuing on if you don't like rambling and chill and just playing around with random technology and all that sort of thing. But anyways, on my random searches on eBay, I came across this. And I thought this was the prototype Nokia that wasn't released, the Nokia 7700, which... I was wrong, this one was actually commercially released, but for the asking price, being in lockdown, all that sort of thing, I sort of went, you know what, I'm going to purchase it, I want to check it out, I want to see what it's like, and so I did that. You can buy the Nokia 7700, it is a prototype, but it's like a thousand US dollars plus, so it's a bit out of the, you know, sort of budget range, whereas $149 for this is a much better dealio. Now, as you should all know by now, I have a lot of rare and obscure Nokia devices, Sony Ericsson ones and all that sort of thing. This is a Nokia N810 that I have in my collection. It's in storage, so I can't really show you, but just take my word for it, I have it. Honestly, I have way too many phones. How much do I have? 1,646. That's suitcase, phones on the desk shelf, phones in drawer, garage phones, and clones and sample phones, which I just recently done. And I've got more to do. So yeah, I'm at 1,646. But I have a lot of obscure phones. That's what I'm trying to say here. And as I said, when I seen this on eBay, I thought... Man, I'm never going to see another one, so I may as well purchase it. But the Nokia 7710 was released in 2004, and it was the first Nokia device with a touchscreen, and the first Nokia branded device with the 2 to 1 aspect ratio display, which was 14 years ahead of the Nokia 7 Plus. Thanks, Wikipedia. And yeah, the 7710 is based on the Nokia 7700, which was never released. And this is Nokia's only smartphone to run the Series 90 interface on top of Symbian OS version 7.0. So there you go, there's a little bit of history there. But I think we need to have the product right here to start checking out this thing and take a better look at it. There we go. I've got it in a flat rate satchel bag from Australia Post. Took 14 days to get from one state to the other. Thanks, lockdown. And I guess this isn't going to be a review on this. This video is more just of me having a look at an item I've never, ever held in my hands before. I just want to see what it's like. I've got an MMC card prepared. Do you have a 128 megabyte multimedia card? If you don't know the difference between MMC and SD, they're almost very, very much the same, except different pinouts, and MMC is a lot thinner than SD. But if you do have an SD card reader, you can put an MMC card in there, most of the time anyways. Let's crack this open and take a look and see what the Nokia 7710 is all about. Because as I said, I've never held one in person, never seen one. I, th As I said, I thought it was the Nokia 7700. That's what I thought I seen on eBay, but it was close, you know, only, what, 10 off? It's close enough. So we do have it in this bubble-wrapped sort of thingy going on here. That's cool. Comes in a Dell box. Well, that's very unexpected. So, opening this up, let's take a look. Oh, more bubble wrap. Oh, shrouded in mystery. Okay, so we do have the original charger here, which is just the standard sort of Nokia. ACP7A is the standard sort of older, old school Nokia chargers. I have plenty of these. I have too many of them, to be fairly honest. We do have the original headphones that came with them, which these will be any earphones from a welcome device, that's for sure, but it's cool to have these, even though I do have, once again, so many of them. Inside of here is the device itself, which is pretty well packed, I will say. Also, this device is kind of smaller than I thought. That's what she said. But in all honesty, the, oh, there's the battery. Oof, look at that thing. That's a pretty trippy battery. BP5L. There you go. I thought this device would have been a bit bigger, but it's about the same size as an N-Gage. Maybe a little bit... a little bit bigger than that. There he is. Oh, he's upside down. There you go. There he is. Wow. Well, we've got a D-pad. We've got probably an application button, the Symbian button, uh, two other buttons, and another button. That makes sense. Uh, we've got call, call end, and push to talk on the back. We do have a couple little pits in there. That's okay, though. It's still in good condition. We've got our one megapixel camera. Just one. One only. That's okay, though. We've got a pop port and the charger port just there. We also have the stylus, which is built into the device itself, the original Nokia stylus. Does it have Nokia branding on it? 
That's the question. Yes, it does. Amazing. Put that in there. Got power button. Probably got the speaker just there or somewhere. Maybe it's got dual stereo speakers. I don't know. But it's all looking, yeah, pretty sophisticated and it feels quite premium. You know, before phones were just slabs of just you know, slabs. Nokia was out in the world innovating. So was Sony Ericsson and a couple of other phone companies. You know, they were making random ass weird phones like this. And here we go. This is the first touchscreen Nokia device right here in my hands. And as I said, I've never held one in my hands before. As I said, fairly well built. All Nokia phones from back sort of in the early 2000s sort of thing, all of them built extremely well. Not a problem with them whatsoever. Uh, they would survive basically anything. And now Nokia just makes slabs, unfortunately. They're doing a couple of old school things, but you know what I mean. Let's pop the back cover off, which I think it's this one here. It looks like it's this that comes off and then this sort of just pops off. Oh God, I don't know what I'm doing. The thing with Nokia phones also is you just guess. You just sort of take a bit of a guess and hopefully you get it the first time around. Oh, hello. There we go. It is the Nokia RM12. The model doesn't exist. Okay, there's also a purple sticker in there that says HW1520F5. I hope that means that it's original. It should be. Made in Finland too. Excellent quality. There's a loudspeaker there, by the way. That's a pretty beefy one. We're going to be playing BFG Division on this, of course. Why not? So we're going to need a SIM card. Now, I think I've got one that works just here. This should be a working Telstra one, I think. If it's not, that's okay. We can put another one in. Get our MMC card. Shove him just in there like so. And the battery will go in like so. We can just chuck that on. Let that clickety click, click, click. And let's power on Nokia 7710. Is this the power button? Should, oh, there you go. Look at it go. Oh, did it, oh no, no, it's still alive. I was gonna say, did it die? It's okay, it's booting. Symbian devices always used to take a while to boot, always. They were very intensive. So you have to give them time to, to, to work and kick in and all that sort of thing, unless it's boot looping because of the MMC card that may be not supported, I'm not too sure. Alrighty then. Boopity boop 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 to you too. Alright, life support. Bingo. Now if you all want to know the specifications of the Nokia 7710, I'm going to display them on screen, but things to note is that it's 2G only, because it was released in 2004. 3G wasn't around until 2005, I don't think, but anyways. 640 by 320 display, that's a touch screen, it's an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, 204 pixels per inch density. Symbian 7 OS with the Series 90 UI on top. Texas Instruments, OMAP 1510 chipset. The 1 megapixel camera that can capture video in QCIF format, or QCIF. And the battery is a 1300 mAh one as well. Okay, so it's come up with enter puck code. So that means that didn't work. That SIM card's dead. That's okay. I have a bag of old SIM cards. The screen looks pretty clear for what it is, though. If it's not like a CSTN display or something like that, then it's fine. But this is a TFT display. And honestly, not too bad. 640 by 320. Can't complain with that. Now I've got to pull the thing apart again to get the SIM card out. Taking the SIM card out and doing all of this reminds me of when I used to use my N-Gage as a games device and stuff, when I used to take the MMC card out all the time <laughs> to put N-Gage games in. It, this is sort of what it looks like. You'd have to take the whole thing apart, start again from scratch. It's just, it was fun back in the day. Not really. I'll try a Virgin Mobile SIM. These are all dead SIM cards, but I mean, you need one to actually boot up the device itself, so... Just put that there, put the battery into place, and let's just power this up, see if we actually get anything, or if it's going to say to me, nope, you need to put another SIM card in, which I will gladly do, because I have a bunch of them. One of them will work, I just don't know which one. What was the actual retail price on one of these back in the day? How much did this thing cost? From what I can see, 300 US dollars. Also, this SIM card's not inserted. It's, what do you call that then? Oh, would have been uh, good s'mores if you if you actually looked at the book. I'm an idiot. Why do I keep SIM cards that don't work? That's the question. Telstra SIMs are bulletproof. Not really. That's a lie. 
Obviously, we can't do calling or anything because we don't have 2G in Australia and 3G is now on its way out, so kind of can't do anything about that. Oh, yeah, you would hold it. There's the earpiece there and the microphone would be somewhere there and you would hold it like that. The 7700, however, was a side-talking device like the Engage, the original one, so that would have been fun if that was re <laughs> if that was ever released. Everyone would have been doing side-talking for a while, but I don't think the 7700 would have sold that well. I don't know how well this actually sold as well. Considering this is a very unique and rare device that I've never really come across, it would sort of suggest that this would be a very rare device. One of the devices that didn't really sell well because people wanted slidey phones and flip phones and phones that weren't slabs <laughs> back in the day. And uh, this is catering towards a certain market, I would say. Uh, we need to plug the charger in. Is the SIM card actually going to work this time, or am I going to need to change it for the fourth time? Go on. Come on. You can do it, Nokia. I believe in you. Now, I don't want to tear this apart either. Even though it's probably like six torque screws holding... Th oh, where are the screws? That's... You know what? That's fine. Uh, it's a pin code. Really? Okay, you probably need to use a stylus because using fingers is probably not a great idea. Let's try another SIM card. Oh, I've got a Crazy John's one. Hang on. Ha! Ah, unless this device is locked to a network, which would be really strange. We'll work this out. We've got this, fellas. We've got this. Now, if you don't know who Crazy John's was, uh, it was a phone provider that was in Australia in the early 2000s. They sort of ceased to exist now. But they were sort of like Telstra, I think. I think they used Telstra's network? I believe so. But I remember seeing stores of Crazy John's, and they had a mascot. It looked really weird, but, you know, those were the days, man. Those were the days. You know, we've just got... Vodafone, Telstra and Optus just, you know, doing their own thing, I suppose. I miss the old days, man. I miss early technology back in the 2000s. Even though I couldn't get a hold of, you know, that much technology when I was a kid, you know, the stuff that I did see on TV and, you know, out and about in the shops and stuff, it's just all, oh, it's so amazing. Now you just walk through the shops now, well, if they're open, and you don't really see anything that's exciting anymore. I mean, the only sort of phones that I think are exciting are the whole foldable phones that we've got now. That's probably the only super exciting thing that's come out in the last sort of seven, eight years sort of thing. I don't really think there was anything really cool before that. I mean, pop-up cameras were cool and stuff like that, but we're just... It's just the same thing over and over again. Whereas if you look at the history of Nokia devices, it's all just a, a huge span of different devices that do different functions and twist and spin and turn and bop and jump and I don't know man this is a lot of things with Nokia phones finally we got a boot screen holy crap um, I've shown some of my obscure Nokia devices on stream so I do have some weird ones I do have some really weird ones especially the lipstick phone which uh <laughs> I did show you all we now get the stylus we're gonna put the back cover on as well because you know we don't want the battery falling out while we're doing our you know intensive gaming or something we're gonna update that let's just say it's 2004 let's just pretend it's 2004 for a minute 2004 i didn't own a computer i didn't have a phone in 2004 i don't think yeah i didn't have a lot in 2004 how old was i in 2004 actually 11 i was 11 in 2004 holy moly but there we go we've got everything we have here we've got telephone calendar real player images documents to do file manager cell broadcast converter messaging web visual radio Profile sheet, clock find, voice recorder, data transfer, context, music player, camera control panel, presentations, calculator, log sync, device manager. Let me just scroll down a little bit. And we've got a count as well. Where do we start? Where would we want to start? So this is our desktop for the Nokia. So let's just say we press the power button. So we can lock the device. Enter lock code. No, oh, no, 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 no. I mean keypad lock. On older Nokias, you would press uh, left option key and star, I think to do the uh, keypad lock. No idea how you do the keypad lock here, but anyways, this is everything we have here. Uh, let's go into control panel. Let's go take a look in here. Now, I used Series 60 devices for quite a long time, Nokia 3650, Engage, uh, Nokia N91, N95, N96, all that sort of thing. So I've kind of put a couple of applications on the memory card of this. I just want to see if they install. Uh, but we do have App Manager. So if we open up App Manager, no installed applications, no nothing. Uh, certificate Manager, I remember having to play around with Certificate Managers to install random games. Those were the days. Uh, device setup. I want to see like default ringtones and stuff. I'm not really used to this user interface. So, oh, this is just, yeah, okay. We'll just finish. That's fine. This is just the device setup. Uh, memory. Let's see if this is RAM or, me no, memory card. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're, we're counting the kilobytes. There we go. All right. Memory card though. I do have some stuff on there. It's uh, 128 megabytes. 
which this came with a, what was it, a 64 megabyte one, which didn't come with it, but that's okay. Positioning settings for GPS, real player settings, screen calibration, I don't think we need to do that. Bluetooth, data call, device language display. Can we change the wallpapers somewhere? No. Internet setup. It's no Wi-Fi on this. Can't do a lot with that. So this was an Optus device originally. There you go. Uh, pen input settings. Oh, let's try training. Did I do it? Oh, okay, cool. Well, we've got handwriting recognition on here, which, you know, is pretty cool. VPN, Oof, VPN on a device in 2004, okay. I think what I want is customization. That's what I'm looking for here. How do you go back? You would use this button here, this button, this button. Nope, that made everything bigger. That's the zoom button, I suppose. Okay, that makes sense. So then how do you go back? Zoom out. No, that's not what I wanted. I don't know what I'm doing. Symbian button. There we go. That would work. That's a little bit better instead of all of them being sort of bunched together. If we just sort of scroll down profiles, this should be where I can do the customization, like ringtones and stuff like that. So personalize. Ringtone is diazon. Diazonon? What the hell is diazonon? Let's go through some of the old ringtones for these Nokia devices. How do I adjust the volume? <laughs> Ah, uh, this is good. I don't know how to adjust the volume. We're doing well. We're doing well here. What's that diaza, diaza whatever it was? Hello, how you doing? I didn't see that there was a play tone button right to the side of it. Okay, let's try that again. Let's go find di diazanon. Holy shit, 2004 techno. Discoid. It's not Discord, it's Discoid. Man, these ringtones were groovy. Electric Eel. Is this what I think it is? That speaker's beefy. Uh, excitement. That's not what I think of when I think of excitement, but okay. Did they get Scooter to do all these ringtones for Nokia? They probably did. Ooh. Very, uh, very serene. Uh, maybe I should have started from the start. Beep. Okay, cool. Bloom? Feels like a horror movie. The alerts are gonna be just beeps. Okay, well, it's gonna be a bit of a... Calendar alert. Okay, clock alert. Ugh, imagine waking up to that every morning, ugh. Kind of like a ball going down a staircase or something like that. Boop, 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 boop. That's it. Boop. All right. Ooh. You can tell these ringtones are straight from 2004. Holy moly. Delight. That sounds just amazing, but okay. Desk phone high. Ah, don't scream at me. Ah, don't yell at me. Okay, let's try gloom. This is an AAC format too. Oof. Funky shit on this thing. Hmm. 
Imagine your phone ringing with that. <laughs> your phone's just being all nice and serene in your pocket. Just... Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Heather. Heather. How you doing, Heather? Oh, that was, uh, that was very quick. Message two. Where's the default Nokia tone? Is it here? Oh, 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 wouldn't want to wake up to that. Whoa. That's one I've heard before. Ah, there it is. Well, that's not the classic Nokia tone. We'll get to that, though. Mystique from X-Men. was unique. Night Owl. All right. It's a MIDI file. Polyphonic ring. It's like fucking Woody Woodpecker. Nocturnal. I've heard this one before. Mmm. Good stuff. Nokia Churn. Here it is. Everyone. Salute. Nokia Churn. Right here. The OG one. Should put that on my actual main phone, that'd be funny. Uh, Persuasion. Persuasion is a ringtone name? Alright. What does it sound? Oh, Persuasion. I hope you got the, uh, the drift of what I was going for there, but anyways. Uh, pursue. I'm convinced that some sort of DJ from 2004 done all these ringtones from Nokia. I wonder who the composer was. They sound pretty high quality. I mean, they're in AAC format. Oh, I've got Snapdragon on here. Oh, wonder what that'd be. Smooth. Alain Noir. Well, that's what it sort of sounds like anyways. Now on Snapdragon, what's Snapdragon going to be? Oh, got some synths in there. They are pretty cool ringtones though. A sound clip. Some bloke had this phone, and uh, he recorded a sound clip on here. Not too sure what he was saying, though, and I can't even decipher that, and I'm Australian. So, uh, anyways, Sparkles. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah I'll, I'll associate Sparkles with this. We have Vent last. Vent. I think the funkiest one out of all of them would have to probably go to Diaznon. Yeah, yep, Diaznon. All right, let's see if there's any images actually on here. They haven't obviously factual reset this, but there's images of all oh, default Nokia images here. Here we go. All right, oh, spirally donut thing. You know what? We've got a D-pad. <laughs> I could just use the D-pad. Uh, that would have been helpful, Smalls. You could have used the D-pad the whole time. Okay, that's that's good. Uh, oh, yep. So, looking like a stage out of res. Lines, I don't know. Squares and more squares. Cool. And we also have CDs or iPod click wheels in some circles. That's a good explanation for all of them. I'm, I'm glad I made sense of that. What else can we try on this? What's the web going to look like? On a device like this, what does the web look like? I mean, we can't really test it completely, but we can at least get a glimpse of what it could have looked like. There you go. Uses Opera. Nice. Oh, look at that. 2004. Holy moly. If we wanted to type in... Well, we can do handwriting. You can only do one letter at a time. It's not that advanced. You can't just write a word and then do that. So, if we wanted to go to, let's say, Google, how long would it take me? D 
to do... Oh, well, actually, it just came up right there. But it's actually not that bad. I mean, I typed in Goosel, but, you know, it's uh, it's not that bad. Oh, okay. I'll fix that. That wasn't actually too bad. Or we can just go straight for the, you know, that there, and we can move that around to wherever you need to be. Use that to then go back. It's actually not a bad keyboard interface with the whole gestures and all that sort of thing. Very, very interesting, but that's what the Nokia page would have looked like in 2004. Well, the sort of startup one, you know what I mean. Telephone. Let's just open some things. Uh, star hash zero six hash. We can see the serial number. That's the OMEI, but that's all right. Cool. No worries. We've got music player. Let's open the music player. Go on. Let's try BFG Division. <laughs> I've put BFG Division on here because I just want to see how loud the speaker is. Have I had any Nokia devices let me down in the speaker department? I don't think so. It's going to update. I remember the N95 you used to have to uh, come into here and do some sort of uh, scanning thing to scan for new music. So go memory card. Now we've got a 320 kilobit file here. MP3. That's options. All right, so now there should be some tools. There was a thing for like speaker loudness in other Nokia devices, but that's okay. We'll just leave it. Here we go. What do you reckon it's going to get to? It's going to be loud. One oh one point eight, we got two, but the kicks in that Nokia speakers, man, they don't let me down. Unless they're on those really cheapy, shitty Nokia phones, and yeah, okay, they might have let me down, but no, that sounds good. I actually haven't worked out the back button. We just press Symbian button. Problem solved. Visual radio. I wonder if we can use FM radio on this. All these years later, it should still work. I mean, I oh, yep, yep. Connect wired headset to listen. That's why I have him. I remember the pop port. I had Nokia six two eighty eight. Used to use this for USB connection. Ugh, it was horrible. But it worked. Nova was on 96.9. What a great song to play on Australian radio at 9.39pm on a uh, Wednesday night. Well done. But radio works, but where's the visualisation? Well, that was fairly interesting. Camera. I'll take this out now. Probably don't need that. What does the camera look like? One megapixel. I'm not going to do the camera test now. I will do it probably tomorrow and uh, splice in some... Oh, dear Lord, there it is. There. But that's okay. Give it the benefit of the doubt. It's a 2004 device with a one megapixel camera. I'll splice in some photos and videos that I took with this Nokia 7710. Let's just say the quality... We're not going to question the quality of this. Just accept it. 2004. Be fair to this device. Let's go. Testing video recording on the Nokia 7710 this is what it looks like. This should be in QSIF, which is 176 by 144, I believe. Is it better than a welcome device? Of course it is. It's a Nokia device. It's going to look nice. All the flowers and all that good stuff. I mean, the preview size is pretty small, so I can't really tell what's going on. But uh, take my word for it. It looks good. There's Ripley. I'll be inside soon. And the brick wall straight down through Shewitt looking a little something like that. The lemon tree in all of its glory with plenty of lemons. Finally the faraway aircon. Can we zoom in? No we cannot. That's where we're kind of at. So there you go. That's the video test for the Nokia 7710. Well, there you go. I hope those looked and sounded reasonable. As I said, for 2004, just 
give it a pass. I keep forgetting this D-pad on here, so I go straight for the touchscreen, but then I go, oh no, there's a D-pad. So I could just one hand stylus, the other hand D-pad. That's probably how it's meant to be uh, controlled. I don't know. Documents, is there anything in documents from the previous owner? No, there's not. Sheet, which probably be what? Some sort of Excel sort of thing going on here. Workbooks. All right, fair enough. There was something there. 2005 that was done. All right, well, what's, what's in here? I'll blur it if it's anything. No, it's nothing here. That's all right. Is there any presentations on this phone? There is not. To-do list. I have a to-do list on my phone all the time, which I always have to look at to remember what I'm supposed to be doing, but nope, no to-do notes on here. Clock, calculator. Actually, what do clock and calculator look like? Just for the whole sake of it. What do they look like on here? Also, is there an accelerometer? There is not. 2003 and 2004 there. Calculator looks like a calculator. Yeah. Yep. That's a calculator. File manager will come back to. Find is probably going to just search the entire device for files and stuff. Games. Ooh. Well, there's no games installed, which is sad. Device manager. So I'm pretty sure this is what I had to come into to install .sis files. Oh, no. No. This is for the internet, presumably. Device manager. Okay. Device manager. I think of Windows device manager. Account in caps here is for the SIM card most likely. Yeah. Balance. Nothing. This SIM card has not been active or recharged since like 2005 or something. So let's go straight to file manager. Also, I should press some of the random buttons around here to see what happens. We'll go file manager and I'll see if I can install some of these files that I have on my memory card. So there is a couple of videos on here, actually. Let's play these videos. This is probably a default Nokia one, I'd say. Oh, no, it's, oh, look at that CRT. So someone in an office had this. There you go. The second one is 113 kilobytes. Okay, so this dude is just filming his uh, people in his office. Is that a news broadcasting station? Because I can see a whole bunch of TVs there. Video 2 is probably going to be the same thing. Oh, big picture magazine. Oh, look at that printer. Wow. Amazing. Wow. It's like a time capsule, man. Except it's not my information on here. Anyways, file manager. Let's go down the list. So we've looked at the wallpapers and stuff. We've looked at everything in here. So I've got some jar files as well as .sis files. Let's try Doom 3D. Can we install an actual Java application on here? Or is it going to say, nope, and kick me out? Yep. Okay, so I have Doom 3D. No signature found, that's fine. But it's converting, it's doing something, so we'll just give it a go. I mean, I don't know how I'm going to control it, because we don't have a number pad or anything like that. We're, we do have a D-pad, so that's completely fine. It did. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got a Java application. We do have some uh, SIS files. I've got Quake, and I've got uh, Tomb Raider Legend as well. I also have C2 Doom as well, which oh, should just probably do this. Uh, unknown file format. Oh, okay. SysX. Okay. And Tomb Raider Legend. Okay, so maybe you can't install SIS files. I mean, they could be for newer uh, Symbian operating systems. This is for pretty old version of Symbian, but I had a Nokia 3650 that accepted these SIS files or sys files. Maybe they have to be for the right phone. I'm not too sure. I just pulled these out of my archive of just random Symbian games. So it could be my fault here. But we've got Doom installed. Let's go back and go and play Doom on this thing. How's it going to look? Doom 3D. Is it actually going to launch? It is. No, it's not. Maybe it will. So Doom didn't install, so I've installed Quake 4, which doesn't exist to uh, a lot of Quake fans. There's a little Quake icon there, I can see that. Let's see if this actually does anything. Sadly, they don't launch which these did launch on my N95, and they're just Java files. So you would think that they would work, but no. It probably has to be designed for this phone, because these applications are 240 by 320 resolution applications, so there's a possibility that that's, that's why it's not working, unless it's password that you got to open, which would be funny if it was... I was going to say. Uh, no. Well, let's uh, press some random buttons. So if I want to call someone, we'll press that, all right. And then you push the talk... Oh, it's the sound recorder. Okay, but I think if you hold it, it's the... Oh, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's recording. Oh, it's the sound recorder. Okay, but I think if you hold it, it's the... Oh, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I think if you hold it. Just push talk. 
Yeah, no voice tag saved. What other buttons do we have to play around with? I don't know the keypad lock though. What would the keypad lock be? Do you just sort of press the on button and hope for the best? I really don't know. Lock touchscreen and keys, there we go. Oh, okay. So, oh, so you gotta press this one and this one. Okay. There you go, I found the keypad lock. Sad that I couldn't play games on here, but that's, as I said, probably due to incompatibility reasons and stuff like that, but there's not a lot I can do on this in its current state. I mean, it is 2021, there's not a lot that I can do. It's pretty much outdated at this point in time, to be fairly honest. It gives you an idea of a time capsule, of a time where technology was more fun, more original. This sort of is reminiscent of phones that we sort of had a couple of you know years ago with a touchscreen a couple of buttons on the side and stuff this was 2004 first touchscreen device by nokia was it 150 dollars cool though yeah it was yeah because it's kind of a collectible now and uh you know i can just put it in my collection and just have it for no particular reason other than to just say I have a 7710, but as I said, I don't know how rare these are. I just assume that they're rare because I haven't seen another one or held one in person. But then again, as I said, that could also be because of sales and all that sort of mumbo jumbo. I do like this. It's a pretty cool size. And it's basically if the Engage had a touchscreen. Actually, no, the Engage QD, if it had a touchscreen. That's pretty much what this is. I'd say they had the same specs as well, but I'm not too sure. User interface for this is actually fairly usable. For 2004, it would have been more than usable. I would imagine that people would have had a little bit of confusion trying to use this back in 2004, because, you know, it is a little bit complicated using the whole touchscreen and stuff. People weren't really used to touchscreens back then. It was pretty fun having a look at this, I gotta say. And while I haven't tested the camera performance, I can just say that it's probably not going to be too bad, honestly. For something as old as this, they're going to be acceptable. I don't think I'll get my hands on a Nokia 7700 because of how uh, expensive they are. So I'll settle with this. This was more than enough. I have had a look at it. It's pretty cool. The speaker's nice on it. The display is nice. It does a lot of things. It takes MMC. For back then, it's pretty cool. Comes with a lot of default apps, but they're all quite useful. Kind of like the communicator series, you know, sort of the Office-like applications. But then again, they were on um, S40 as well as S60 anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I just don't want to tear it down because I don't want to wreck it. Because the little plastic clips that hold this thing together, you know, the casing and stuff, they're very brittle. And I want to leave this in its pristine condition. I mean, it's not pristine, granted, it's not pristine, but I want to leave it in its condition. <laughs> If that makes sense. I don't want to tear it apart just in case because to find any parts for this is going to be almost impossible. I mean, speakers and a couple of other things you can find, but most of the parts for this, long gone. Never going to see them again. I don't even know if they sell the batteries for these anymore. That's the Nokia 7710, the first Nokia touchscreen device, which, yeah, bit of a trip down memory lane. And as I said, this video was just a sort of a, a rambly, chill video of me just having a look at an old device and just sort of testing it out giving it a go, see what happens. I do have a bunch of other devices that are sort of in my collection that I should go through one day. If you want to all see me have a look at old school devices like this, feel free to let me know and I'm happy to just sort of play around with them for a little bit and have a look at them. If I do have two of the same device, I'm more than happy to pull it apart and all that sort of thing. But if I've only got one, of, you know, a rare device. I don't really want to pull it apart. Even though this is probably very easy to take apart, I don't want to risk it. Switch it off. Those ringtones were cool, though. Gotta say that. I hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, just a rambly, chill video. Nothing too special. Just wanted to have a look at this because I bought it on eBay and just wanted to see what it was like, and it was pretty cool. There's other Nokia devices out there that are even cooler than this. And yeah, if you want me to take a look at them, feel free to let me know, and I can arrange that. Don't know when it'll be, though, but it'll be sometime down the future. This actually became a review more than anything, but for 2004, pretty technologically advanced in 2004. If you have one of these, also let me know down in the comments if you've used one of these or something similar. Let me know. I could come back to this with games, but I have a feeling that I have to get games specifically made to work for this device. But if you know about that whole compatibility issue, feel free to let me know down in the comments as well, and I can come back to this and try it again one day but otherwise i'll leave it here thank you very much for watching this video i really do appreciate it hope you learned something or found it entertaining either one it's all good with me as always take care stay safe be good people i'll see you all in the next video of me playing around with more random nokia devices and sony ericsson's and
that sort of thing. These things are fun, man. When phones were cool, here it is here. Now they're just slabs. I mean, this is a Poco F2 Pro. It has a pop-up camera and it made the back clear. It's kind of cool. All right, cool. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.